to ensure the data consistency of an application program which is running from different work processes. We have to collect all the changes from different work processes and put those changes in SAP LUW. Then that SAP LUW we have to insert in database LUW. With that we can ensure that our all the changes will be executed together or not at all. If you are not getting this sentence, then this video for you. We will talk about today SAP LUW and database LUW. Whenever we are updating the data in the database to our application program, we have to make sure that data is consistent in the database, especially when we are editing some data in the database. This consistency is controlled by logical unit of work. What, do, what I mean by consistency, suppose I want to update two, three tables in the database. If some, if one table is updated correctly, second table is updated correctly, but third table, some, I got some error. But in this case, I, I don't want to up, update another two tables because my third table got error. If I don't use this logical unit of work, that I can't do. So what is this logical unit of work? It's nothing. It's just time span between the two consistent data states. In this, in this time span, we have flexibility to return previous consistent data state. Suppose I, I, I'm updating the three tables, which are, which are interrelated, interrelated. Either I want to update all the data of three tables. If something goes wrong in one of the table, I don't want to update all the three tables. So in this case, suppose I, I have updated two tables and I got some error. So if you work, if I'm working in between these two database states, I have flexibility to return to the previous consistent data state using I can revert all the back, revert all changes the back to, to the previous consistent data state. This is called rollback. We are rollbacking our changes. If ever, if everything goes everything goes okay and we are okay and now we all three table is updated. In this case, we have to say database, everything is okay. So we'll do the commit. As soon as we do the commit, it will reach the next consistent data state of the database. So that is the reason I told you the, the time interval between the two consistent state of the data state, uh, database, it is called the logical unit of work. In this, we have the flexibility to return. If something goes wrong, we, we can return to the previous consistent data state. In the SAP, we have two types of LUW, logical unit of work. One is the database LUW, second is the SAP LUW. We'll discuss first about the database LUW. A database LUW is a sequence of operations. Sequence of operations means what kind of operation? It can be update, read, or create. This sequence of operation with, which is ending with database commit. This is the database LUW. You can see it's ending with database commit. Whatever the operation within this database LUW, it will execute fully or it will not execute at all. The, this is the not case that the half operation is executed and half is not executed. It will not happen within the database LUW. Suppose everything goes well and everything is goes updated and updated, then database LUW leads to the next consistent state of the database. And after that, new database LUW will open for another operation. At a particular point of this database LUW, if something goes wrong, then so whatever the changes we have made till this point it will be reverted back and the database will reach to last consistent database state. This is called rollback. So now we will talk about what all are the types of this database commit and rollback and when, when it will happen. Database commit, it closes all the database cursor. What is this database cursor? Whenever we write the select query in our program through the database interface, one database cursor will open through the open statement, open database cursor. And it will face the data through the fetch 
and after the getting the data it will close this whole thing done by the database inter interface implicitly we are not doing anything whenever we are writing the select statement that is the reason whenever uh, we, we see the st05 trace then let, there is a lot of open face in close statement for particular select statement not only that sometime we will do uh, we will we are dealing with huge amount data amount of data that time we will write explicitly that open database cursor and fetch database and close how it will behave suppose i write open database cursor for one select query which is returning thousand line of thousand line of data that database cursor will point to the first line of that ties thousand line of table as soon as if i write a fetch statement and i get 200 entries using the count i want only 200 entries after the getting those 200 entries the database cursor will be updated with the 201th entry next time database fetch execute it will execute from 201 to the 200 till 400 entries like that in five set we will get the all the data as soon as when the fetch statement execute when it will not getting the data then sai sabars will get fail and we have to go close the database cursor here we are writing the close data set, database cursor statement to close that cursor but whenever the database commit will happen all the database cursor will be closed there is one uh, exception for that whenever the database cursor statement is executed but for that database cursor the fetch statement is not executed so those cursor database commit will not close apart from that all the database cursor will be closed by database commit after that, after closing all the database cursor, database reach to the consistent database state. There is a two type of database commit. One is implicit database commit, second is explicit database commit. Explicit database commit done by ourselves. When, when we write the commit work and commit connection statement, then that time it will be done. The implicit database commit commit happen through the system itself suppose for example completion of a dialog step what is this dialog step i have already explained this dialog step in my first video where i have explained about the netwear architecture r3 architecture if you want to see the link is there you can see so what is this dialog step it is nothing just the processing between the two scripts for example i want to open a program I will write a SE38, I will go to SE38 and write the program name. As soon as I enter and some processing is happening in behind. And in, after some time, we will see the our ABAP program. So that processing is happening in background, that all processing is called the dialog step. This dialog step is executed by the work process. Especially we, if I emphasize dialog work process will execute this dialog step. So as soon as this dialog work process execute this dialog step, it become free for another user. It will not wait for the input for the, that from that particular user again. It will just, it will become free and the dispatcher will assign that work process whoever require that particular work process. So that is, but work process is having the dedicated connection with the database. So, so as soon as that work process become free, the user and the database have do not link between that uh, they don't have any link between the user and database that time implicit database commit happen that is the one case second case whenever we are calling the function module synchronously or asynchronously it will be called in another session that time also database commit will happen implicitly we are not writing any code just it will happen due to we are calling another function module. Whenever we are giving any kind of message, error message, information message, or warning message in our ABAP program, that time also the implicit database commit happen. I'm talking about database commit, not SAP, uh, uh, database commit of the database LUW, not the SAP LUW. Please make sure at this time, I will explain SAP LUW after this database LUW. Whenever we are calling the call transaction and submit program, that time also this database commit will happen. 
So you have to make sure because it's very important when we learn about SAP LUW, then we have to make sure when the database LUW uh, commit will happen. Now we talk about the rollback work, database rollback. The same is database rollback also happened two times. One is implicitly and second is explicitly. Explicitly when we write the rollback work or rollback connection, that time it will happen rollback. When SAP developer, ABAP developer want to rollback work, then he can write rollback work. And implicitly done by system, whenever we get a dump, runtime error, error will get, it will automatically do the rollback. And second time, second thing, that when we are we are getting a termination message, we, when, when the message type is A, we are getting those kind of message that, that will also do the rollback. Now we talk about SAP LUW. First, I want to explain this diagram, what it is doing. Suppose I, I have started one transaction. So process before output will run and it will, the one screen will appear, 100 number screen will appear. Then again, we will do some changes on that screen. Then we will put enter. Then again, process after input and process before, output will trigger and again, another screen will appear. Like that, we will do again some changes and 300 will, screen will appear. As I told you, so between each screen, whenever the screen transition is happening, this is called one dialog step. This is another dialog step. This is another dialog step. There is something happening behind. This PBU is happening in this work process. And this PAI and PBU is running in this work process. And this PAI and this PBO is running in this work process. So the work process is changing each time. But work process is having a dedicated link with the database. As soon as the 100th number screen will appear, there will be, in this time, there will be no link between, direct link between the database and the screen. So the database, implicit database commit, as soon as the work process and their work, the implicit database commit will happen. Again, the second screen, same thing, implicit database commit will happen. But real time, in the real time, if I am entering the, some data in this particular screen, and suppose I am creating the sales order, there I am entering the data in the 100 screen, one of the tape, another tape I am entering some other data, and another tape I am entering some other data. I don't want to commit the data, suppose I entered the header data in this work process, and I switch to the line item data, I'm entering line item data. But I don't want to save this header data alone in the database. I want to save all the data together, or I don't want to save data if something goes wrong, even that sales order, I don't want to save at all. So for that, if I work with database LUW, this is not possible. Because database LUW, each time the implicit database commit is happening. I can't save half data and another in LUW, half data, I can't save like that. So that is the reason SAP LUW concept will come. So what, what is the use of SAP LUW? What it will do? It will collect the changes throughout the different screens. In first work process, whatever the changes you've done, it will collect. Second work process, it will collect. Third work process, it will collect. It collected all the changes in the SAP LUW. What it will do? It will put this asset at the end of when you click on save button and save button that commit work statement will trigger and it will as soon as the commit work statement is triggered, it will put this SAP, entire SAP LUW inside one database LUW. So what is the advantage of, if we are putting all the changes in the one database LUW to the SAP LUW, the, if something goes wrong, nothing will be updated. If everything is okay, everything will be updated. So that is the use of the SAP LUW. It's a bit complex initially, but if you understand once, it will become very simple. It's a real-time business scenario. We can't, as we already know, we can't save the changes in the half-half, half-half changes for different screens in the directly database. You always have to collect all the changes throughout the different, different screens, and that we have to put in SAP LUW, and that SAP LUW we will put in single database LUW, then the old changes will happen together. Uh, if something goes wrong, it will not happen at all. So how to collect these different, different changes throughout the different, different screens? That is called the bundling technique. There is a three kind of bundling technique. One is update function module. Second is transactional RFC. Third is bundling using some rotate. 
these bundling techniques we will discuss in my next session. In this video, we have learned about SAP LUW and database LUW. If you have any doubt regarding this, please write it down in comment, comment section. Please like this video and subscribe this channel. Thank you and happy learning.